2 Chronicles 13, 1-22 Devotional Focus Verse But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him. And the priests which minister unto the Lord are the sons of Aaron, and the Levites wait upon their business. And they burn unto the Lord every morning and every evening burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. The shewbread also set they in order upon the pure table, and the candlestick of gold with the lamps thereof, to burn every evening. For we keep the charge of the Lord our God, but ye have forsaken him. Second Chronicles 13, 10 and 11 The summer before I started sixth grade, the Lord baptized me with the Holy Spirit. Looking back and considering how young I was, that seems truly amazing. But God knew I needed it, and I sincerely had surrendered my young heart to Him. I'd told Him I'd do whatever He wanted with my life. Of course, at 11 years old, I had no idea what that would mean, but I meant it with all my heart, and that prepared me for the battle that was ahead. I believe now that the moment I walked into my sixth grade homeroom class, my teacher was reminded of the faith of her childhood and the upbringing she had resoundingly rejected. Later, she directly told my parents she was raised that way. That entire year, Mrs. Smith seemed set on convincing me to turn from the faith. It was a multitude of little things. One time we were creating self-portraits, and she used me as an example to show the class that they could add jewelry to their picture. In essence, pointing out to my classmates how odd it was that I didn't wear jewelry, one of the many ways I didn't fit in with most of my peers. Another time when my parents had me excused from a classroom activity, she flat out told me I was old enough to make my own decisions, to which I replied that I had made my choice. That was why I was following their request. As a very shy girl who would have preferred not to have any attention on me, that year was challenging. Yet, I remember feeling bold and almost defiant as I went to school each day wondering, what will she try today? One might say I was outnumbered. My teacher was an adult, I was a child. She was educated and persuasive. I was still learning basic reading, writing, and arithmetic. She had the crowd on her side. I was essentially alone. But like the people of Judah who won their battle when they shouted, verse 15, I had confidence because I was doing what God wanted. Abijah basically told Jeroboam in our focus verses that Judah had continued following God's instructions while Israel had turned to idols. I had the same testimony. I was doing my best to follow God while my teacher had turned away from the truth she had been taught. There is a special confidence that comes from being consecrated to God. The people of Judah were outnumbered two to one, 800,000 to 400,000, but they won the battle because they had God on their side. That's what makes the difference every time, in events as big as national war and as small as a sixth grader standing up to an ungodly teacher. Background Information Following the death of Rehoboam, his son Abijah succeeded him on the throne of Judah. Abijah is referred to as Abijam in the parallel account in 1 Kings 15. Chapter 13 describes a battle that took place between the armies of Abijah and those of Jeroboam, ruler of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel. The reason for the battle is not given, but seemingly Abijah felt that the flagrant idolatry being practiced in Israel deserved judgment. While God had instructed Rehoboam in 2 Chronicles 11.4, not to fight against his brethren. In this case, warfare was permitted. When the two armies assembled, verse 3 indicates there was a clear numerical advantage for the northern kingdom. Verses 4 through 12 record Abijah's forceful appeal to Jeroboam and the army of Israel. While 1 Kings 15.3 indicates that Abijah was not a righteous king, he did try to induce the northern tribes to reunite with Judah. Mount Zemaram, mentioned in verse 4, was located in the territory of Benjamin between the two kingdoms. Standing upon that mountain, Abijah rebuked Jeroboam and Israel for three specific sins against God. 
Israel had broken the covenant of salt, indicating an everlasting commitment in which God had decreed that David and his sons would rule over Israel forever. Abijah asserted that the dynasty of David was the only legitimate ruler over the tribes of Israel, including these ten northern tribes that had rebelled and separated themselves from the two southern tribes, verses 5 through 7. Israel had brought the golden calves, the man-made objects of their idolatry, with them into battle, an indicator that they had forsaken the true God, verse 8. Israel had substituted non-Levites for the true priests that God had chosen to be Israel's religious leaders. Verse 9. In verses 10 through 12, Abijah concluded his appeal to Jeroboam and Israel by stating that in contrast to their actions, Judah had maintained the true priests and sacrifices as commanded by God. He warned Israel that they should not fight against the God of their fathers, because if they did so, they would not prosper. Verses 13 through 20 describe the battle in which God fought for Abijah and the armies of Judah. Although greatly outnumbered by Israel, Judah won the conflict and Israel suffered a tremendous loss of life. In addition, Judah took control of three cities, Bethel, Jeshana, and Ephraim. Jeroboam's death is briefly mentioned in verse 20, although details explaining the phrase, the Lord struck him, are not given. The concluding verses of the chapter record the family of Abijah. In verse 22, the story, in Hebrew Midrash, of the prophet Edo is a reference to an ancient rabbinic interpretation of scripture. Conclusion If you find yourself in a situation where you're outnumbered, take courage. You can be confident of victory when God is on your side. 2 Chronicles Chapter 13 Now in the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam began Abiyah to reign over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Mishaiah the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. And there was war between Abiyah and Jeroboam. And Abiyah set the battle in array with an army of valiant men of war, even four hundred thousand chosen men. Jeroboam also set the battle in array against him with eight hundred thousand chosen men, being mighty men of valor. And Abiyah stood up upon Mount Zimariam, which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, thou Jeroboam, and all Israel. Ought ye not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David for ever? even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt. Yet Jeroboam the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon the son of David, is risen up, and hath rebelled against his Lord. And there are gathered unto him vain men, the children of Belial, and have strengthened themselves against Rehoboam the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and tender-hearted, and could not withstand them. And now ye think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord in the hand of the sons of David, and ye be a great multitude, and there are with your golden calves, which Jeroboam made you for gods. Have ye not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron, and the Levites, and have made you priests after the manner of the nations of other lands? So that whosoever cometh to consecrate himself with a young bullock and seven rams, the same may be a priest of them that are no gods. But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him, and the priests, which minister unto the Lord, are the sons of Aaron, and the Levites wait upon their business. And they burn unto the Lord every morning and every evening burnt sacrifices and sweet incense, the showbread also set they in order upon the pure table, and the candlestick of gold with the lamps thereof, to burn every evening, for we keep the charge of the Lord our God, but ye have forsaken him. And, behold, God himself is with us for our captain, and his priest with sounding trumpets to cry alarm against you. O children of Israel, fight ye not against the Lord God of your fathers, for ye shall not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambushment to come about behind them, so they were before Judah, and the ambushment was behind them. And when Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind, and they cried unto the Lord, and the priests sounded with the trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave a shout, and as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass, that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abiyah and Judah. And the children of Israel fled before Judah, 
and God delivered them into their hand. And Abiyah and his people slew them with a great slaughter, so there fell down slain of Israel five hundred thousand chosen men. Thus the children of Israel were brought under at that time, and the children of Judah prevailed, because they relied upon the Lord God of their fathers. And Abiyah pursued after Jeroboam, and took cities from him, Bethel with the towns thereof, and Jeshna with the towns thereof, and Ephraim with the towns thereof. Neither did Jeroboam recover strength again in the days of Abiyah, and the Lord struck him, and he died. But Abiyah waxed mighty, and married fourteen wives, and begat twenty and two sons, and sixteen daughters. And the rest of the acts of Abiyah, and his ways, and his sayings, are written in the story of the prophet Edo.